I'm Dr. Lauren Stryker, and during this time of national crisis, my family, like many families out there, decided that we wanted to do something that would make a, a meaningful contribution. And one of my great concerns, of course, is the fact that our medical personnel that are on the front lines do not have enough protective gear, gloves, gowns, and masks. So I wanted to be part of the Million Mask Challenge to get masks out to those frontline medical providers. So what I'm going to do is to walk you through how to make a mask at home. And while you do need a sewing machine to do this, I'm gonna tell you where the non-sewers can also participate. Now the final product is going to look like this, simple mask with elastics on either side that will go behind the ears, goes under the chin, and then not covering the eyes, but resting over the nose. Now, I do want to point out that as a surgeon, I feel like I have the inside information as to what we are looking for in a mask. Number one, it has to be comfortable. Number two, it has to be breathable. So many people trying to be helpful have emailed me, well, how about using this material or that material? And while it sounds good to use something that's completely impermeable, I have to be able to breathe. But we also want to be able to block out as much bacteria and viruses as possible. So what I've settled on is something that the CDC is also recommending, and that is a very, very tightly woven cotton. It's also important that we put these pleats in here because this mask is gonna fit a variety of face sizes and shapes, and this gives a lot more flexibility in terms of comfort. One of the modifications that I've added is when I made my first couple of masks, I realized that there was a gap up top, which was not only uncomfortable, but was also an open window for bacteria and viruses. And in our usual, typical surgical mask, we have a metal piece that goes over the nose so that you can squeeze it and have it adhere to the nose. So I've come up with a simple home modification that allows to have that nose bridge so that it will adhere. So this is what you need. Very simple, simple supplies. Number one, cloth. Now, I have used 100% cotton, tightly woven cloth that is cut into nine by nine inch squares. I've also chosen to use plaid, not because I'm hoping that everyone's gonna look very fashionable, although that is something that's generally pretty important to me, but honestly, because it makes it a whole lot quicker and easier to cut, you don't even need to measure, and also to sew along the lines. So in this particular case, these squares are each half an inch, which means that we just count down 18 squares and 18 squares in order to cut a perfect square. And for you non-sewers, this is something you can do. You can prepare all the squares for the sewers. The second thing that you're gonna need is elastic. Um, one quarter inch elastic, three eighths inch elastic. This should be cut into strips that are about seven inches long. Again, a job for the non-sewers. The third thing is for the nose bridge. Now what this is, this is from a spool of ribbon that happens to be wired. So I cut a piece of wired ribbon, which is oh, roughly about 16 inches or so. And what we're gonna do is fold it in half and you'll see how I sew this on. And this is ultimately going to be what is going to keep the mask, which is gonna be comfortable and resting lightly on the face. The other thing that may be useful to you is to have a marking pen, particularly when you're first learning to do this so that you know what's the top and what's the bottom. It takes me about seven to 10 minutes per mask. And one of the things I'm gonna point out as we go along, we're not looking for perfection here. We are looking for something that is going to be easy to make, quick to make, and functional. Function is our number one thing. The idea being that once you have the finished mask, we can send it to hospitals, we can send it to places in need. They will wash them to make sure that what they're giving their personnel starts off as being clean and sterile. And then most important, these will be reusable until such time as our national supply is replenished. So let's get to it. So for demonstration purposes, I've actually taken a marker and written on the wrong side of the fabric, top, bottom, side, side. You don't need to do this, of course, but I just think it'll make it a little bit clearer what I'm doing. The first step is you take your wired ribbon uh, and we're going to put it on the wrong side at 
the top of the fabric, but you wanna bring it down a little bit because you have to leave room for your seam allowance. So we're just gonna sew this on quickly and it's gonna get sewn on better as we go along, but this is really just to kind of hold it in place. So let's quickly sew that ribbon on. And that's step one. So step two is now we're gonna take both pieces of fabric and we're gonna put them right sides together. Obviously the top is gonna to be going to the top. Now you can pin it if you want. I have not been using pins for this because uh, it's faster, but depending on your level and comfort, uh, certainly pins help. So now we're gonna take them again, right sides are together. We're going to the bottom, what's gonna be the bottom of the mask. And I'm gonna start right in the middle, about halfway using your usual seam allowance. And lock your stitch as always. And then we're gonna go to the end. But you're gonna stop when you're about an inch and a half from the end. And this is where you take your first piece of elastic because now we're gonna be working on the sides, which is where these loops are gonna be. So you take your pre-cut piece of elastic and you're gonna put it inside here and you're gonna take that elastic and put it right in the corner there. And then you're gonna sew that elastic into place and then put your needle down, lift, go around the corner as you normally would. Be really careful as seamstresses, we've all made this mistake. Make sure that the elastic is inside well out of the way so it doesn't get caught. And now what we're gonna do is we are going to sew the side of the mask. So you sew along. You know, always people think that surgeons only sew skin. Well, that's true, we do. Um, but this is something that my mom taught me when I was a kid. She taught my brothers as well, just as a life skill. This is a good thing for people to know. Um, and now I'm really glad that I do know how to sew. All right, so as we get close to the end, stop about an inch and a half before, and I'm gonna reach inside to get the free end of the elastic. And I'm gonna put it in the corner there. and sew this elastic into the end. All right, so now we're gonna bring the needle down, lift and turn around. Now we know we're at the top of the mask because this is where our nose bridge is. And at the top of the mask, we're gonna go just right across and we're gonna keep our sewing, I almost said suture line, there was a slip. We're gonna keep our sewing line uh, just right across the top of that ribbon so that it will be in the proper place when we finish. So now we're just going to go along here. I love sewing. It's so relaxing. There's no blood loss. Everybody lives at the end of it. There's a lot of advantages over surgery. All right, so as we get to the end, now we are at the other side of the mask. So we're ready for our second piece of elastic. So I'm going to take this piece of elastic and I'm going to put that again right in the corner. And I'm going to go to the end. And again, I'm going to bring my needle down, lift the needle, turn, make sure that the elastic is again well out of the way. So now we are on the other side of the mask and we're going to sew all the way down again. You can see how fast this goes. I mean, truly when I'm not stopping and explaining when I'm just following through, um, I really can whip one of these off in about six or seven minutes. And obviously it's not, you know, I'm not, finishing seams, I'm not ironing as I'm going, all the things that you would do if it was a nice piece of clothes, we're not bothering. This is about functionality and getting as many out as possible. Okay, so now as we get close to the end, this is actually just a little bit trickier because um, you have to find that elastic and we don't have as much room to work with, but so reach inside there and get the other end of the elastic. We're going to bring this back in place. I'm going to hold this there with my finger. Bring that down. And we're going to, so now we're finishing the second side with the second loop of elastic in place. 
Okay, and we are at the corner, so needle down, lift and turn. Now remember when we started before, now we're back at the bottom, and we have to leave an opening there so that we can turn it right side out. So I'm actually just gonna sew a very little bit here, lock the stitch, and then we are done with this part. So let's pull this out of there. And I'm gonna cut the thread. So now we're going to turn it right side out, which if you did this correctly, what that means is that you will have both of your side loops in place. And it helps if you just pull on the elastic a little bit to get those corners to turn out properly. You can see they pop right out. So what you're gonna end up at this point is a square with a loop on either side. So the next part of this is we now want to make our pleats. And again, we know where the top is because it was marked. Here's the top right here. And we're gonna make these pleats so that there are three of them. And again, you can pin this if you want, but I'm doing this without pins in the name of, in the name of time. And this is where it is really handy having these squares because I can see exactly where to go without measuring. So I'm bringing down my first pleat here. And I'm sewing my first pleat. And as I finish that, I'm going to get my second pleat. Again, you want all the pleats to be facing the same direction. So you're going to fold it down one more time. Again, using these squares, let's make this a little bit more even, using these squares as a guide. And now we're gonna do our final pleat. Helps to lift up the needle just because you can manipulate the fabric a little bit better. And great, now we cut out the final pleat. Now as we get to the bottom, remember we had that open part, so I'm just gonna tuck that in. You can do that separately if you want, but again, I'm, I'm going for speed here. So, down, down at the bottom of the mask, needle down, lift around, and now I'm just going to sew all along the bottom of the mask. And now I'm going to turn this around, and this is the final part, and we're just redoing the pleat that we did on the other side, again using my squares and lines to guide me. Pleat number one. And we have pleat number two. done with the mask. Now the final thing I think also which is a nice thing to do is I've been taking a black uh, fabric marker and writing at the top of the mask on the inside top nose because when that medical professional is grabbing the mask you don't want them to have to feel around and see where the wire is. When I take a surgical mask I can tell by looking where the nose piece is but in these you really can't so it's really nice if you just write top at the top of the mask you know feel free to write a nice little note or something like that but but this is it this is the finished project very easy it is something that i think is really going to make an enormous difference and it's something that you can do and uh, thank you for joining me and i appreciate all comments and uh, any other suggestions you might have and please check out drstriker.com for articles on things that have nothing to do with masks.
my next tutorial, maybe I'll show you how to do hysterectomy. Just kidding.